Hey guys, welcome to the newest episode of Blu-ray Tuesday with Terrell. All right guys, we're back for another episode and I wanna start off this episode real quick because something crazy happened today. When I left work, I was so happy to leave out that work, I ran out of work by the way. And it was, it was, mind, mind you, today was the Mondayest Tuesday ever. And I'm walking home, um, cause I live very close, and I've across the street, there's these fucking, there's like hella cops. And I got scared, cause I gotta go this way. And I don't want nobody shooting me, all this shit in the, in the news, right? And um, there was like 20, like, like like maybe 20 cars, cop cars, it was weird. There was a cop truck, a SUV, they're blocked off these streets. And at the end of the street was a fucking Texas Chainsaw Massacre looking ass truck. And it was just sitting there with the white, with the cartons, you know, like the people be living up in there. It's like the one from Pig Killer when he was fucking bailing, just like that. And um, basically, uh, people it was all these older people and younger people too, TikToking it up. They were all recording. I was like, "What are they recording? The cars?" And then I'm looking to ask a couple people. One person didn't speak English. He's like, "Oh, I, 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 bitch, what is you saying?" I asked the next guy. He was like, "Oh, there's people in the truck and they won't come out." And I'm like, "Oh, this is getting juicy. What kind of Lifetime movie is this?" So. I started walking back and I said, you know what, let me take me some pictures. Let me join the club. So I started taking some pictures and then there was a cop right behind me by the Chipotle and he said, hey, I was like, oh, my heart was beating. I don't want to get shot. So there's this white cop and he was like, hey, he's like, you can't record right here. I was like, oh, okay, I'm out. And he was like, yeah. And I was like, he said, oh, I'll try to ask him. I said, hey, what is happening? And he was like, oh, I don't know, but they've been shooting, they've been shooting this way. I'm like, oh, uh-uh. So my fat ass was running. I ran home. <laughs> you, I couldn't get home fast enough because there was this fucking car. I didn't want to get ca caught in the crosshairs of these fuckers. So I get home and I try to look up on the news. I didn't see no news people. I don't know what was happening, but that Texas Chainsaw Massacre ass truck was just sitting there with the curtains closed and the cops were surrounding it, but they couldn't get in. Bitch, y'all couldn't bust through. But anyways, I guess they were shooting because you could smell it. You could smell the smoke. I'm assuming it's gun smoke. I've never been in a shooting. But yeah, it was very interesting. But uh, that was my night, it was the highlight, and I was so glad I almost died today, y'all. It was Final Destination. Anyway, so you know, you, you catch the clues. So my ass was gone. But that was that was very, um, my excitement of the day. Moving on, so it's Blu-ray Tuesday, and I wanna talk about something that I've seen all over social media, and that is the prices of Blu-rays. Mind you, it's Best Buy is, the, is leading the pack, because Best Buy, all these fucking movies that are coming out are expensive, more expensive You got DVDs for Amsterdam. Anybody wanna see that long-ass movie? $30. Who gonna spend $30 for Amsterdam? Uh, what's for Taylor Swift? Bitch, I know you sell records, but you don't, you ain't no actress. But anyways, that movie's a DVD. Are we in 1996? I don't know. But remember DVDs used to be $29.95 or some shit? But yeah, the DVD is $30. Blu-ray is $50. The fuck? Who gonna spend $50 on a Blu-ray? This show might get canceled, girl, because I ain't got time to buy these movies by that, that price. That is way too much. But look at Best Buy. A lot of their movies are $39.99, $32.99 for DVDs or regular Blu-ray. 4Ks are in the 40s and 50s. And I'm like, what is happening? And they're considering that a sale. I don't know what kind of sale that is, girl, but I ain't rich. Or if y'all could afford that, I mean, hmm, more power to y'all, but that's insane. Amazon is slowly following suit, but a lot of their stuff is a lot cheaper. Like Wakanda Forever. Wakanda Forever for the regular 4K is $39.99 on Best Buy. But if you go to Amazon, it's still its normal $27 or $29.99, which we're, uh, that, that's a given. It's the Ultimate Collector's Edition version. I get it. But bitch, not $40. And then you got the, uh, the fucking Steelbook close to $50. That is crazy, and y'all want to release not one, but two exclusives of this steelbook? My ass wanted to order them both. I can't pick and choose. I like Tuck Home, and I like Wakanda. I gotta pick one, because that's expensive. But anyways, um, I don't know. So is that the new normal? Maybe inflation? I have no idea. But bitch, I don't want to spend that much money on movies. That's expensive. But I mean, I probably will. Moving on. So next, I want to talk about something that happened this past week that was super exciting. So I know every freaking week there's different giveaways, cavity colors, for t-shirts, for movies, all this stuff. I enter, sometimes I luck out and win, but lately I haven't. I've been tagging the same people, maybe I gotta uh, fix this, because twice, Barbarian had a giveaway, and fucking another movie recently that came out, not Smile, something else, regardless. I, I tag Shades, if you watch it, you know who I'm talking about. Shades, the Smiles, I call them Smiles, so you always be hang out at Monster Palooza's. I'll see you hopefully in June. And uh, yeah, I always tag you and your ass end up winning. Like, bitch, you got that bottle with the hair coming out from Barbarian. But it was my turn to shine because I entered to win Shangela tickets. Hallelujah. But Shangela's from RuPaul's Drag Race season two, season three, and All Stars three, which she arguably should have won. She's on Dancing with the Stars, which she arguably should have won that too. And now she has her own tour. 
Shit sold out in minutes, and now I uh, AT and T did a giveaway, and my ass won. It was so great. I got a ticket. It was a plus one, and um, yeah, I was super excited. So it was on this past Friday, and I get there. I was scared. There was gonna be a long ass line, but everything was great. We walked in. It was fine. The drink line wasn't that long at the time, and um, yeah, we looked at our seats. The seats weren't too bad. The seats, it was great. It was a whole nice night out, right? So I ended up going to get some drinks because, bitch, I got to have a drink at this, this uh, event. So they had the hot loo margaritas. We got up some beers. And we go up to the fucking um, station where the bartender is. And the, the bartender, super nice lady, by the way, her name is Kathy. And I, have, I posted this selfie. She recognized me from this show. Ain't that crazy? She was like, you do, you're on Instagram. I was like, yeah. And she was like, I love your videos. You should do more. And I'm like, oh my God, this girl's so nice. I feel like a celebrity. I, I don't know. I felt weird. Because I'm not that, I don't know. I don't think I'm like, I don't know. But anyway, so she's like, hey, you're not buying these drinks. So I was trying to pay her for the drinks. She gave us drinks and free popcorn. I was like, yes. Yeah. So I could sip and grub. It was amazing. So she was super nice. And she said she, she found me. I guess on her daughter's ex-boyfriend's page or her son's ex-girlfriend used to follow me or watch my videos or the little reels on Instagram. And then she just thought they were so funny. She said she'd be sitting in her bed listening to these just cracking up. And I just thought it was so shocking. Like, bitch, of all people, you recognize my ass? That's crazy. But it was super fun and I'm excited. And she's super nice. So shout out to Kathy, Artful Dodge on Instagram. Love her. And um, she tried to tell me she tried to lie about her age. Girl, you look young. Don't lie about your age. You look great for your age, by the way. And um, yeah, so turn up. Super nice. And shout out. Thank you for that drink, girl, if you're watching. All right, so I watched a lot of movies this past week. Oh, my God. Some are good. Some are bad. Some are just in the middle. Some I forgot about. We're going to get into it. So Friday, a lot of movies dropped, right? So I was super excited for the first movie I watched called Shotgun Wedding, starring Jennifer Lopez and uh, Joshua or Josh Duomali. What I don't know if I can say Dumel. Anyways, so these guys are in this love rom-com. All right, J-Lo, bitch, you look good. But why are you in another wedding movie? Another, bitch, Made in Manhattan, you got married. Uh, Monster-in-law, you're getting married. Uh, all these fucking wedding movies. Selena, I think she got married in that too. And bitch, every movie you in, you getting married or you fighting. Or you getting fucked and then you, your family getting killed and the boy next door. Anyway, so Jennifer Lopez, girl. So this movie was uh, supposed to come out a few years ago in theaters, I believe. And uh, it was supposed to star the Army Hammer Man, the man that likes to uh, physically eat pussy, like literally bite a chunk out of it. He eat people, right? And um, him. But they cut him out after all that fiasco that happened, all those leaked shit with the girls like, oh, he want to suck my blood, literally. Uh, uh, he out. So they got Josh Duhamel, you know, the one that used to date Fergie with the small dick. Yeah, that one. So yeah, so Jennifer Lopez is in this movie, right? And it's about her and all the family all together. And they're all here on an island. So all the families are coming together and they're like, oh, we're going to get married, ha, ha, ha. And then all these people be coming in, like trying to like, I don't know, these bad guys, basically. And they fucked up the thing. People get kidnapped. And basically the whole movie is about, oh, why are we getting married? We don't like each other. And then basically as the movie progresses where they have to like fight for their lives, they realize that they love each other. You know, like it's basically the movie, right? It's a rom-com, but there was more ramen than common. It wasn't that funny. But uh, I will give it to Jennifer Coolidge. She was great. Mm -hmm. You know, Stifler's mom. And she's in the Lotus, White Lotus show that everybody raving about that I'm never going to watch. But yeah, she's great. And uh, Jeff Lopez, uh, her body looked banging for 52, 53, 54, however old the bitch is. But her body looked good. That little crock top and the booty shorts. But she was trying to seduce that man. I don't know. Anyways, J-Lo, love her. So I watched it. Tune into that. So another movie I watched in theaters was Infinity Pool. So Mia Goth is like the queen of, uh, side note, I don't know Mia Goth is with Shia LaBeouf, Shia LaBeouf, whatever the fuck his name is. Did he went alcoholic or something? I saw an interview with him recently. He was talking about Mia and how he truly loves her or something. I guess he got mad at her once because she went to go film a movie. He thought she was cheating, so he went to go cheat and they got separated. But then they back together and they have a baby. Side note, I didn't know that. That was new for me. So maybe that's new for you. But if not, I'm, I'm out of the loop. Anyways, Mia Goth doing her thing. So, Infinity Pool. Ooh, let's get into it. So, Brandon Car uh, Cronenberg, the son of uh, David Cronenberg, he uh, directed this film, I guess. And it's, it's, it stars the other Scars Guard, not the one from Pennywise and It, the one from True Blood. And basically, it's about, oh, how do I talk about this movie? All right, so this movie, it's like, I don't know. I left that theater not really liking it. I gave it three stars, but I changed it. Let's just get into it. So, it's about this guy and his wife who go to this fucking retreat or some shit. 
And his wife is gorgeous. She got these nice little supple lips. She gorgeous. I saw her, I was like, why the hell you wanna cheat? Anyways, oh, I don't wanna spoil this too much. I was just so shocked. Mia Goss looked basic as fuck, looking like Willow Pill from Drag Race. Shout out to Russell for calling that out. But yeah, looking like that, and bitch, is she up here jacking him off? Anyway, she crazy. So let's just talk about her. When they finally meet all these other couples, these little, just, just these couples, she's just acting dumb. She's like, oh, I just can't cut the bread. Bitch, you dumb as hell, you acting. Well, she's a great actress. Anyway, so the whole movie, I like her progression. Let's just side note this. Her progression, Mia Goth, in this movie, I like how she was this, she played off to being this timid girl. She got very horny. The movie's horny. Horny ass movie. Very uh, seductive. Uh, a lot, every scene, people, the way they're looking at each other, the way they touch each other is horny. They want to fuck. And there's a, there's a fucking scene of orgy, very artsy-like. You see dicks, pussies, uh, and, and um, there's some fat people. So you see a lot of hoop flaps. You see all that, but they be fucking. And um, it, it, they do it in an artsy way with these different colors, to, 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 you know, the mask and shit, right? But we can still see the little penises. Anyway, so, uh, so it gets to uh, that. So she gets all horny, and then she gets crazy. So it goes from her being timid, uh, manipulative, horny fucks and then crazy jamesy bitch you crazy she is insane and i love how she progressed and she did really well in each of those moments of the film so and the movie has a lot of different undertones you could like, dissect this film to death but basically there's this guy and um he's this writer i guess nobody gives a fuck about his books because i guess his books is boring his wife's rich so he's living off of her ass and uh she, so he probably feels weenie he probably feels like oh i can't do much right so he gets into this core group who just bring him in and just they up him up they just like what's the word the terms that y'all use nowadays but they was there was there's upping him up some kind of way you know and um i don't know but basically uh gassing him up i don't know but anyway so basically this in this in this show in this movie uh he they get to him up to this level and basically they're driving in the car they're drinking they're drunk and they hit a they, i know she did last summer bitch basically that they hit or scary movie but they were about to start fucking in that car anyway so they hit somebody they accidentally kill somebody and they're in an area where they don't give no shit like bitch you're gonna die you get a death penalty for uh, uh smoking outside i don't know anything <laughs> pick up the fork the wrong way you're going to jail killed so basically uh that's what happens and they be getting uh cloned and shit uh, spoiler alert, I'm sorry, I fuck up spoiling this movie. But we just don't get into it. This is how I, I'm gonna talk about how I felt after this. But basically, they get cloned and they kill them. But I, what I liked about this is you don't know, kind of, and I wish they went in more into this like, there's the real one and the clone, but then they kill one of you. They kill the clone in front of you. You gotta watch it or some shit, right? So that was weird to me because, bitch, what if they killed the real one because they put all the body and the, and the, uh, the, the really thoughts into the, the clone? So who knows which one? They don't even know they're a clone. They think they're the real one too. So that's kind of interesting. Maybe the real one was knocked off and those people were clones. I don't know. I don't want to spoil too much more of this, but this movie, I did leave it thinking like, what the hell is this? But when I left and thought about it more, this movie was pretty solid. The ending, it sits with you. Um, I guess I was expecting something different, which is why I was not into it at the time. But I did like this movie. I see a lot of people give it praise, and I see why. Infinity Pool would, I think it would be a good rewatch, and I can't wait to watch that again on Blu-ray. All right, guys, so the next movie I watched, I know it's a lot, VOD Friday was lit. I watched Candyland. Okay, Holiday Horror, shout out to you because you posted this and you warned me. I get it. You didn't, you, this movie's weird. So Candyland is about the, uh, the lot lizards. The lot lizards, L-O-T lizards. They're not really lizards, but they're real people, but they be fucking. So uh, it's about five characters. There's four women and one man. And what they do is they be around the, uh, the truck driver station when these old truckers get back. You know they're on the road all day, they're away from their families. They need to get theirs, right? So they be around and they get paid to fucking suck on these menses. So you got the boy to take care of the gays, you know, the DL men, they're out there. And then you got the women uh, who just, they just look trashy. So basically the, it opens up with some sex, right? She just riding her titties flopping from left to right. And then it's just, and then she get her money and go, right? And then it goes to another girl who's just sick or something. She's sitting outside bored, they kiki and talk about life. Oh, so girl, you just got fucked. You guys just, it's just like nothing happened. And then another one does it in the bathroom. Then the boy's sucking this one off. It's just a crazy movie. I ain't gonna talk about this too much because I didn't like it that much. I mean, I get it. It's supposed to be a horror movie. It's supposed to be a slasher, knocking them off, which they did. Uh, that did happen, uh, kind of, sort of. And there was a scene that really got me because uh, I, I talked about a couple episodes ago, um, Soft and Quiet, and that movie pissed me off. And it starred the girl who's talking about the girl calling her a whore, and that bitch looked like a white trash whore. Well, she's in this movie as that lot lizard bitch. She's in this movie, and she had a weird-ass scene because a man, she he, he paid her 
to uh, go down on her, right? So he gives her the money. He says, I want you to lay back. I want to take care of you. And I'm like, oh, girl, get it. I was excited for her. And then he pulled his teeth out. This was so nasty. He went, he pulled him out and put him in a glass, a glass, like a water glass that you drink out of. And then he went to suck it with them lips. He had no teeth, so he was getting up in that pussy. She was loving it. Lot lizard it up. She was, he was getting it in. I was happy for her, but that old man was nasty. He pulled, he pulled them teeth out. I was, ooh, I, ooh. That was an experience. And it was a weird ass scene with the dude because the boy, when um, he was going to get his coin, the guy was like, oh, you're just so cute. I want the top dollar from you. Blah, blah, blah. So he's about to give up his whole body. And then he knocks him out and then rapes him. And then when he awakens from him fucking him, he was going to scream. He's like, oh, if you scream, I'm going to slit your throat. So these are some kinky ass niggas. So why you want to knock a bitch out when he's about to give you his, all his goodies and cooties? And um, I don't know. This movie's weird. But then some of them start dying. And I was just like, okay, this is fun. They got religious. I was like, I don't know. Candyland, don't mistake it for the game that we play when we were kids. But uh, not much to say about this. I didn't really like it that much. But if y'all like it, let me know. All right, so the last movie I watched uh, this past weekend was Stranger. So this one I knew nothing about. And when I tried to look it up and went to Letterbox for this, I type in Stranger, 20,000 other movies pop up. It was really weird to me. I was like, fuck, everyone has this name. So this one's gonna easily get lost in the shambles of all the other Stranger movies. And I get it, and it's fine that this gets lost and it could go far away. I do not recommend this movie. Let's get into it. So it's called Stranger. So it's about a thriller about this husband and wife. I assume they're husband and wife because this movie flip-flops back and forth. It's very Tubi-ish. And um, so they went to this cabin for a getaway. The cabin's very empty-like, so I guess they don't go here very often. So. Um, it's a man and wife, so they get there, and they're like, oh, what should we eat, and all this stuff. They had a little sexy time, and they wanted to go make food, right? So she goes to go make food. She makes some type of pasta or some shit. And mind you, when she had the bowl, I've never seen pasta like this. She poured water in a pot, and then she just started putting seasonings in the pot, oil in the pot. She poured the can of so pasta sauce in the water. I have never seen this before. I was like, what in the white Caucasian is this? At least she's putting seasoning. I want to say that. She's going, ch -ch -ch, as she was talking. And while she was talking to her man, he was like, oh, I'm gonna go to the car. We should drink some wine, right? And um, she's like, okay, yeah. She's putting all this salsa and all this stuff into water. And he goes outside and there's this man that walks up. He's like, oh, do you want me to, uh, he just scares him or something. He, I don't know why he's on their property. He don't know why he asked him why. And he's like, oh, I was just, you know, observing or some shit. He was like, I'm sorry to scare you. Let me pay you back. Let me cut you some uh, wood for your fire. And he's like, no, 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 it's fine. He's like, oh, I insist. So why he, he protruded into them, right? So why he bring the he brought the wine back, and then um, basically when they get in, she's like, "Oh babe, what should we drink?" And I'm like, "Okay, wait, did I miss something? This is very tubious. They forgot what they were, their lines were." So uh, she, he was like, "Oh yeah, maybe a margarita." Bitch, you just went outside for wine. Didn't y'all say y'all gonna drink wine? So he says that, right? They start talking about random other shit, right? And. Um, Later on, he says, oh, how about we have uh, mojitos? Or, or how about I make you a, a Long Island? I was like, what the hell is happening? You just said you're gonna drink wine. And he was over there making the drink too, by the way. And then he says again, oh, what if I make this? Bitch, you just made two different drinks. I don't know if they chopped and screwed or they filmed these at different times and forgot. It was really strange to me. And then later on, they're like, oh, how about we have our pasta and drink and watch a horror movie? And then she's like, I don't like scary movies. I don't know why we do this. He's like, I don't either. She's like, why do we put ourselves into this? Bitch, this is so stupid. They're like, they both don't like horror movies, but they want to go watch horror movies in the cabin. It sounds great to me. That's a great, great time. But they don't like it. So it, it pans to them watching uh, Night of Living Dead, black and white. And they were just so spooked, eating the nasty ass watered down pasta. And, um... I don't know where he go. He do something. This movie's all over the place. And then she in the kitchen about to walk. Mind you, it's dark. Blinds is open. What I say in all these movies, white people don't open, they'll close their blinds. So it all opens. So you can see him there. And then she's washing dishes. And that same man from earlier, he just walk up in their house. Why are you? Do y'all don't lock your doors? He walk up in there. Oh, she startles her. And then I guess they make him a drink too. Like, Bitch, y'all too friendly. Let me tell you. This is very uh, speak no evil. And then... I'm going to rewind through this. Ain't nothing else happening. This movie's supposed to be a thriller. Nothing is thrilling happening. It's just the family. They're just there. Oh, they fuck in the shower. Mm -hmm. Exciting. And then and then it gets to the point where uh, the end happens. Another person just walks up in their house. It was a different day. I don't know what they was doing. He walk up in their house. They in the bed. I think they're about to fuck again. He walk in. He walk into the bedroom. No doors is locked. And he has a gun to them. And he makes them play a game. 
Him a Russian roulette. Oh, blackjack. Some type of Texas Hold'em shit. I can't play cards. Oh, no. That's my game. Anyways, they play that. He goes, like, oh, well, if you lose, you have to shoot her. Or she has to shoot her husband. So they lost. She shot her husband. They cried. At least they kissed. <laughs> Knock on wood to take notes. And then, and then, and then, and then he kills her. And then the stranger gets on his bike and rolls off. That's the movie. Spoiler alert. Enjoy. Not, don't watch this movie. It's not good. All right. So, speaking of Knock on the Cabin, the Overlook family luckily got early screening event for this, and it was so great. So I saw the trophy. We were lit. We were out there. We were in there. And um, we saw it at the Metreon in San Francisco. So, M. Night Shyamalan is back with the new film. I'm not a big fan of his. I will say I don't like a lot of his fucking movies, I realized, when I was going through them. I, I'm going to do some rewatching. But Knock on the Cabin it started off great. I'm not going to spoil this one. I'm saying this right now. No spoilers on this one, because I, I mean, y'all got to see it. So, um... Knock on the Cabin starts off great, and basically the premise of this is, it's a, it's a couple, um, I forgot their names already, the movie's kind of forgettable, Eric and Andrew, I think their names is, with their daughter, Wen, the little Asian girl, and um, and basically, they're in, they're going to this cabin for a little getaway, and then these four people show up, Dave Batista, he did really good in this movie, by the way, and then his three other henchmen, these other women, the two girls, so she's a, a nurse, and then a, a bitch who cooks, and then a, a drunk, they all show up. And they just say, we're not going to hurt you. We're trying to be your friend. We're trying to let you know, hey, Armageddon is happening. And the um, only way to stop it is if y'all kill each other. So basically, that's it. So uh, either y'all, you know, make your choice. Uh, you kill him, he kill you. They kill the daughter, they can kill the daughter. It's between the men. And um, y'all got to kill each other. But supposedly, they love each other so much. Uh, I don't want to spoil this movie, but y'all have to see this. So, Knock at the Cabin, I mean, this is the, uh, I like this a lot better than Stranger, because people weren't knocking in Stranger, they were just walking up in their house. So, uh, Back at the Cabin was a pretty interesting film. I don't know, I, the first half I liked, and then just fell off. There's like three or four things that I really want to talk about. I, me and um, Josadi, who's recording this right now, we're talking to the car on the way here, just uh, talking about what would have been different or what I thought was going to happen, but did not. Like there was like things that were set up that would have been so interesting that if he went that route. But I have to remember, this is made from a book. Uh, the book is called uh, The Cabin at the End of the World. So check that out. And this movie wasn't just, just a nice Shyamalan. Yes, he directed it. Yes, he co-wrote it with two other people. Not one, but two. Three writers in this film. So I can see that now, because the beginning, middle, and the end are all over the place, girl. So let's just get into that. And um, maybe, I'm sure you guys are going to love it. Have a good theater experience, I hope. Uh, I can't wait to guys see it, so we can talk about it more in the comments. Maybe if y'all watch it, come back to this video. Let's chat and um, get into it. But Knock at the Cabin, check it out in theaters this weekend. All right, guys. Next up, so for me, I didn't get a lot of Blu-rays this week. The number one Blu-ray I did want was Bones and All. So I do have that on order, and it is on the way, but it, bitch, it came late. So I don't have that physically in my hand now, but Bones and All is one that I really enjoyed this year. Uh, sad part is it has no slip cover. It's a Blu-ray and digital only. There's no 4K either, and it's still $30. So again, we're in this time where Blu-rays are going to be $30. I did order this one because I know it's not 4K. It doesn't have a slip, and it's bare bones, but I love the movie. It's one of my tops of last year. Pretty solid film. I highly recommend you guys checking that out, and I'll talk about it more when I have it physically. But also that dropped today I want to talk about is Crimes of the Future. So, y'all know, we just talked about, uh, earlier in the episode, we talked about uh, Infinity Pool. So his dad, David Cronenberg, did Crimes of the Future. This is a weird one. I didn't like this one at all. But I, but I double dip. Ain't that crazy? I'm a mess. This is 24 bucks, and it's re-released in 4K. So this is why I got this. I own this originally on Blu-ray a few episodes ago when it first came out, like a couple months later it dropped on 4K, and usually I don't dibble and dabble because later on they don't come with slips, but look at this, it actually came with a slip cover. You know, Happy Death Day didn't come with slips, uh, a lot of the re-releases are not coming with slips, uh, Freaky was re-released in 4K, no slip, and that sucks because I like a good slip cover, who wants a bare bones thing on your shelf, look ugly, but anyways, um, this was released in 4K, so at the... I think if y'all want to see all these crazy, the crazy ear man and full definition in 4K, then this is your, this is your pick. And it has loads of bonus features. I was shocked. I don't remember if the other one had this much. Look at that. It's like a paragraph of bonus features. So I don't know if they added new shit to this. It has the, oh wow, the bonus features, it looks like it has Crimes of the Future 1970 included. Is that real? It says Crimes of the Future in 1970 is included in the bonus features. I didn't know this was a remake or, or a movie with the same name, but this is crazy. It has behind the scenes, hella shit, production design, uh, 
uh, the cast react to the board game. There's a fucking crimes of the future of the board game. This is crazy. I'm actually gonna look into this actually. The trailers are on this and featurettes. So this is a pretty solid re-release. If you guys did not buy it before, $24 is a steal for this edition. So look at that weird ear, man. This is the scariest part. This shit's weird. Yo, you know, bitches getting cut up and sliced and they were just moaning. They loved it. It was very orgasmic for them. Kristen Stewart had a nasty kiss with the old man. If you're all into that, this is your movie. Crimes of the Future. I hope that's not our future, but damn. All right, next up. This is a movie, don't kill me. Y'all got on me about dog soldiers because I own like that three times, four times, and I never watched, I still ain't watched it. But anyway, so this is the next one. So this is a movie that a lot of people have seen. It's on people's lists, so people love this movie. And I've never seen it, but it hit 4K today, Event Horizon with Mr. Lawrence Fishburne and Sam Neill. I've never seen this. And I'm super excited because it's in 4K. I have to watch this, y'all. So if y'all seen this, let me know. I have not seen this, so I can't really say much. But I heard a lot of people say this is really good. I guess it flew under the radar. I think it came out like in the 90s. It's rated R for gore and bitch. I'm in for that language and some nudity. So I'm here for it. It has the Blu-ray, 4K, and the digital copy. And it has a cool subcover. Loving this. So I'm definitely gonna um, check this out. And yeah, I'm looking forward to it. So if y'all seen it, let me know. But yeah, that's it for this week's Blu-ray Tuesday with Terrell. Thank you guys for watching and listening to my crazy ass. Thanks for all the likes, comments, Listen to the Overlook Hour, please, every week. Um, and also, stay tuned, because there's more updates on the Unnamed Footage Festival. Not one six, but two, three sixes. Sorry, I'm fucking that up. So stay tuned, because I posted about it. You stay tuned for all the updates, all the movies that are going to drop. And it's going to be fun. So if y'all in the Bay Area, come through. And um, yeah, it's going to be fun. All right, guys, until next time, bye.